God, Amen. As we just heard today, the gospel is from St. John, and the gospel that we are all familiar with is the man born blind. It is one of the readings of the months of Tuba, as it tells about the enlightenment. This man want washed in the lake of Sulwam, and he regained his sight. It was something pointing to the baptism. Through his cooperation with the Lord the Christ and his obedience and faith, went and washed and regained his sight. So that's why it is read during the month of Tuba, where we celebrate the baptism of the Lord Jesus. Also, it is read in the sixth Sunday of the great fast, known as also the Sunday of the baptism. Today, we see this man, simple person, born blind. He had nothing to earn his uh, living except to sit and beg. But he was able to defend himself and his faith against all of the attacks that was carried by the Pharisees around him. And the attacks are exactly like what's happening to us today. This kind of attacks against our faith and our belief in the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday and today as going to be to the end of time. And this man defended himself by a saving triad, three factors that we are going to reflect on today. And as he defended himself, we still can learn how to defend our faith and how likewise be steadfast in what we believe in. So they told him, this man is not from God. The man who healed you is not a good person because he does not keep the Sabbath. This was the reason. So this man used three things to defend himself. The first factor, he used his knowledge. Even though he was born blind, but he was able to acquire some knowledge. And when he said, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. So he knows history, and he knows the scripture, and he knows that it never happened before. He had the knowledge. He was informed. The second factor in the saving triad was his reason. He said to them, now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. It's a simple reason. God will not hear a man who is a sinner. If he was not a good man, God would not listen to his prayers and his requests. He still was a reasonable person and he used his reason to argue against what they were claiming against the Lord the Christ. The third factor in the saving triad was his experience. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. And this was the last one and most important and powerful one. I have an experience. You are telling me this man is a good, not a good person, but I have an experience with him. I was blind and now and I see. How can you argue against this? These three things are the saving triad for every Christian who wants really to live and worship God and to the end of his time, knowledge, reason, and experience. And that's why we find in the world today it's attacking these three things in many, many ways and forms. The same way also we can see and follow with other people in the scripture who came to the knowledge of the truth and were able also to find their way to know Christ. The Samaritan woman, even though she was a sinner, living in hide, in hide away from the eyes of people because she was living and leading a sinful life, but she still also was able to use the three factors, the saving triad. She had knowledge about the Messiah. She had some kind of confused knowledge about where to worship, but still she was knowledgeable. She told the Lord Jesus, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. She had knowledge. And also, she had her reason and her experience with him. That's what made her to run and go to her people and say to them, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? She was appealing to the reason as well. She moved to become a preacher of the truth based on her experience and her reason. Another example also from the scripture that we find the disciples of Emmaus. Those disciples, the two who started to doubt 
Christ after his crucifixion, they left their ministry and going back to their homes, a home village in Maus. The Lord the Christ met with them. They did not know him. And then he started to help them. And he used the same triad, knowledge, reason, and experience. He was expanding their knowledge when he started to explain to them from the scripture what was told about the Messiah. And we, as we hear this in Luke 24, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, used the scripture to inform them. And also, he appealed to the reason. He told them, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? This is logic. It's expected Christ would suffer. Suffering is not contradicting the story of salvation. On the contrary, it's an essential element in it. He was appealing to the reason and they saw his point. And also they had an experience with him. And that's why they were saying to each other after they found out that he was Christ, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Something personal. My heart was burning while I was talking with him. As I said, my brethren, these are a saving triad for every one of us. If we want to save ourselves or help ourselves to be saved or help our children, we have to do the same. We have to be knowledgeable and we have to apply reason and we have to build our own experience. In the absence of one of more, there is no way we can find our way to God. If we are not informed, if we are not learning, if we are not reasonable and we are trying to think and make sense of what's happening around us and apply our knowledge, if we don't have our own experience with God, no one can be saved. We find today the attack against all of these three is fierce. Against knowledge, it just doesn't need anything more than you turn to your news and you hear lies everywhere. The news that was before to be informing us about what's going on, it's all carrying to us lies. And all of these lies are tailored in order for us to believe certain things. It has nothing to do with the truth that's happening around us. In the Old Testament, Jeroboam, he was the first king over the divided kingdom of Israel. He also wanted to deceive people in order to keep them loyal to him. So he knew that, that if they go back to Jerusalem, they will find their way again to know God is, whom God is. So what did he do? He started to give a lie. He built for them like some kind of temples and asked people to worship calves of gold. And he said to the people, it is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. A lie can make millions of people to be deceived and go away from the truth. Look around and see how many people are following false prophets. Just lie to them. And unfortunately, people believed. And they still believe. And they die for the lie. It is so sad. Something that should make us all to pray for those people who are deceived by lies, uninformed. And they're going around just preaching the lie that they believed. So sad. Another attack against reason comes from a, the passion. Our passions can make our reason to be confused. Look at Samson. Samson, he was a man of God, supposedly is a judge. And he was supposed to defend people and defend himself by his knowledge of the truth. But he had a passion. He loved a woman. And his love towards her made her, his mind to lose his reason. Samson said to his father when he asked to marry a woman from the Philistines, get her for me, for she pleases me well. Where is your reason? Is she the right person? Will she help you to do your job? Will she help you to get closer to God? No, she just pleases me. Pleasure is one of the things that confuses our reason and make it to be like cloud. 
This is the easiest thing. And another, uh, this is something that's very common today. Everything today is about pleasure and fun. That's it. Even sometimes when our kids come to the church, where is the fun in it? Are we here to be entertained? Are we in the church in order for us to just to have good time? Or this for us to learn, apply reason, to benefit and to live in a different way? Reason is attacked by passion, either a passion of pleasure and love of uh, the, this, uh, the pleasures of this life or the passion of anger. Anger can make us also to be confused, not to be able to apply reason. The third attack again is experience. Is the fall, the example is the fall of the people of Israel in the Old Testament. God gave them many experiences with him. He divided the sea in front of him. He brought manna from heaven. He made water to come from a rock. All of these are experiences and we find them that they are at forgetting everything. Coming back to Moses say, where is God? What did he do for us? Are we here to die? What happened? How did you forget this? It's so sad, but again, it's so common that we deny our experience with God. We do not keep the memory. And we deal with God every day as if like this is the first encounter. Prove yourself to us. If you are truly God, if you care, then do this. If you don't do it, then I am, I'm not sure if you truly love me or not. When you do this, we deny our experiences and then we become subject to deception and we take ourselves and maybe our children away from God. The last point is how we defend ourselves against deception. Again, we go back into the, the, the saving triad to acquire the right knowledge. This is the way to be free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Today we are so informed with many information, but how many of this information are profitable, helpful? Many information is nonsense, just anything, just wasting time. We look at our phones and we want to see pictures. Pictures is a kind of information, but they are not helpful in any way. By the way, this saving triad, knowledge, reason, and experience, can all be like abolished with one small act. I'll give you an example that happens in every liturgy. Many people in the liturgy, inside the church, they are on their phones, watching anything, watching their Facebook, answering their text messages. By doing this, what are we doing? Instead of learning, we are just wasting time on the phone. And instead of applying reason why I'm here to benefit, my reason is abolished. I am doing something against the purpose, why I'm here. And instead of experiencing God, I am totally living in my own land, somewhere else over in my phone. Look how here the enemy can abolish the whole thing, knowledge, reason, and experience with one single act of foolishness. So I'm speaking in the church and I'm spending time on my phone, living in it and with it. In order to defend ourselves, we have to acquire the right knowledge. We have always also to taste and see through the spiritual practices, to know and understand and taste them. Fasting is approaching the great fast, the greatest season of the year. Some people receive the fast with this kind of dread and fear. Oh, 55 days coming where we, there is no food and we, we have to struggle to find something that we uh, we make in order for us to be able to live. And the whole experience is gone by trying to find a shortcut or avoid the fast altogether or focus only on one thing in it. This is the food and what I'm going to eat. This is, this is again, the church is calling upon us to experience God. And believe me, those of us who experienced the great fast, tasted God in it, would receive the great fast with an open arms, welcoming, rejoicing, because they had the experience and this experience will be a saving one. Remembering the goodness of God, remembering the goodness of people around us, remembering the church and what, it, what she did for us, all of these are helpful. All of these, again, are experiences that will help us to defend ourselves against, against the deception of the, in the world today. Always examining the source of information, debate the reason that people are carrying to us 
from biblical perspective. Today, we hear nonsense around us. We hear people can identify themselves as they wish. A man can say, I'm a woman. A woman can say, I'm a man. Now you're asking a person who is called to be a just uh, in the Supreme Court, is a, a, a judge. And they ask her, what is a woman? And she said, I do not know. It's stunning and sad. To this point, reason is abolished. There is no reason anymore. She doesn't know what the woman is. Then anybody can claim anything. We live today in a world that lost its mind, sad. It is our role as Christians to guard ourselves and to defend ourselves and defend our faith and defend the whole world also by having the right knowledge, the right reason, and the right experience. The man born blind was a simple person, but he was a teacher. And this man is a good example for all of us to learn from him how to defend ourselves, how to be knowledgeable, how to be reasonable, how to build our own experience. May the Lord grant us all of these uh, factors to save ourselves and others. To him is the glory forever and ever. Amen.